in the U.S. Capitol. There was a foreign head of state that came and addressed a joint session of Congress and a little bit of controversy, you might say. Lots of violence and, and protests going on in Washington outside the halls of the Capitol building, some within a rock's throw of it. And here's what was uh, at the heart of all of their consternation. Watch this. Now, just as malicious lies were leveled for centuries at the Jewish people, malicious lies are now being leveled at the Jewish state. No, no, don't applaud. Listen. The outrageous slanders that paint Israel as racist and genocidal are meant to delegitimize Israel, to demonize the Jewish state, and to demonize Jews everywhere. And no wonder, no wonder we've witnessed an appalling rise of anti-Semitism in America and around the world. My friends, whenever and wherever we see the scourge of anti-Semitism, we must unequivocally condemn it and resolutely fight it, without exception. Thunderous applause there, and, and he is bemoaning the fact that all of these deception and these lies that are being said about Israel, because they're, they're completely innocent and they're the victims of, of all kinds of bad things here in the world. Do you, do you buy that? It's amazing. you got 58 standing ovations. Let me make a couple points uh, on this, Danny. First of all, uh, the uh, war in Gaza is the most uh, thoroughly documented genocide uh, in recorded history. Uh, there is just so much information, and I mean reliable information out there uh, about what has happened in Gaza. And much of the information is provided by Israeli sources. Uh, and uh, you want to remember that uh, the International Court of Justice, looking at the information that was just available by late December of 2023, not looking at the information that's available since then, concluded that there was sufficient information available to make a plausible case that Israel was committing genocide in Gaza. Now think about that. There is sufficient evidence to think that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. And uh, what happened yesterday is that the leader of Israel, the person who is responsible for executing this genocide, was invited to speak before the U.S. Congress, and he was given 58 standing ovations. It's truly remarkable. It's disgraceful. I'm embarrassed to be an American when I see something like this happen. Furthermore, this is my second set of points, if you look at what Netanyahu was saying, a number of arguments that he laid out were simply blatant lies. He said, for example, that Israel is not uh, purposely targeting uh, the civilian population in Gaza. There's an abundance of evidence that shows that this is not the case. Yeah. Listeners should go to the magazine. You can get it online. It's an Israeli magazine, Plus 972. That's Plus 972. And there are two articles in there by an Israeli, Yuval Abraham, who talked to people who were deeply involved in the bombing process in Gaza. And it's unequivocally clear from reading those two articles that Israel was purposely targeting the civilian population. This is a punishment campaign against the civilian population. Then he said, if you look at the fact that many people in Gaza are starving, you have to understand that this is not because of anything the Israelis are doing. It's because Hamas is stealing the food that Israel is generously allowing to come into Gaza. This is nonsense. No serious person believes this. Uh, and I could go on and on. You know, we raised this whole specter of Hamas uh, burning babies or killing babies in attics. Uh, there is thorough documentation on how many Israelis were killed, what kinds of Israelis were killed in terms of age and gender and so forth and so on. And there's evidence of only one baby being killed, and that baby was killed by Hamas in a crossfire. 
This is a tragedy for sure, and I don't want to make light of it. But thankfully, we don't have evidence of two or three or four babies being killed, and there's no evidence of babies being beheaded or burned and so forth and so on. But over time, and yesterday uh, when he appeared before Congress, uh, uh, Netanyahu made these outrageous arguments that are simply lies. Yeah. And, uh, and this whole anti-Semitism charge, is there a lot of anti-Semitism in the United States? Well, if you define criticism of Israel as anti-Semitism, then there is a lot of anti-Semitism in the United States. But that's a ridiculous definition of anti-Semitism. If you're talking about anti-Semitism in the sense of hatred of Jews and wanting to do Jew terrible things to Jews because you think they're bad people, that's real anti-Semitism. And there is certainly some of that in the United States, regrettably, but there is not much of that. And that's not what's going on on college campuses. What's going on on college campuses is that people are protesting what the Israelis are doing in Gaza. They are protesting a genocide. And then you have Netanyahu go before Congress yesterday and get thunderous applause as he says that these protesters are number one, anti-Semites, and two, they're being funded by the Iranians. There's no evidence they're being funded by the Iranians. This is another lie. Yeah. This is where we are in America. And you know, when you put together the public discourse that's led by our leaders on Gaza and on Ukraine, what you see is massive deception campaigns. And it's very hard, in my humble opinion, to have a functioning society when people are not acting, for the most part, as truth tellers. And I just don't have the sense that there are many truth tellers in charge in the United States today whether we're in the executive branch or in the legislative branch. When you look at the performance of those congressmen and senators uh, who were applauding him yesterday, you can't help but be thoroughly depressed by right. what they're saying and what they're doing. And, and you can see in that last, that last clip that Harry, uh, Gary was showing right there, those were Jews uh, that were protesting what Netanyahu is doing. They're, they're not you know, tools of Iran. Those are Jews right there that are, that hate what's going on, uh, that it is being done in their name. So you can't call them anti-Semites, uh, even though a lot of people want to try and lump them all together. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. That, that was one of the, a lot of, I didn't like about Netanyahu even being in the building, given what he has clearly been doing in the lies he's been telling nonstop since this the whole thing started, but was that our, all of our people kept giving him all these thunderous applause and, and standing ovations when so much of what he said was self-evidently untrue. And yet they just, they were literally acting as tools of Benjamin Netanyahu. Two quick points, uh, Danny, very important. It's important to understand that uh, roughly half of the democratic senators uh, in Congress were not present. They boycotted the talk and roughly half of the house members who are Democrats were not there. So to their credit, lots of Democrats, roughly half of the Democrats on Capitol Hill were not present, and that's very important. And second, one cannot emphasize enough your point that many Jews, right, uh, are in the forefront of protesting against Netanyahu, Many Jews are deeply involved in what's happening on campuses, and you cannot call these protests anti-Semitic when so many Jews are involved. It just right. makes no sense at all. But again, we do so much in this country rhetorically that makes no sense that it is, in the end, I'm sad to say, hardly surprising.